We ask that you speak to us and touch our hearts with your resurrection. Transform us in your image and bring us into a new creation. Do this in spite of me or through me. For this we pray. Amen. <coughs> in our fifth week of studying the historic Apostles' Creed, the proclamation of our faith, we arrive at the line that says, On the third day he rose from the dead. This line may be one of the most important lines out of the entire creed because in this single line we speak to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In this line we speak to the very purpose of Christ coming into the world. That his divinity is proven through the resurrection. His birth and conception matter because of the resurrection. His suffering and death are only made complete through the resurrection. And so as we state this line each week, as we proclaim that on the third day He rose from the dead, we are truly saying that we are Christian, that we are a part of those who have followed Christ. We are a part of the people who have hope for the future. Who have a promise of God in our lives. Let us hear now the, the story of the empty tomb once again. It was early Sunday morning. So early, in fact, that the, the sun had not yet risen and, and Mary Magdalene was, was on her way to the Master's tomb to finish the hastily done burial preparations that had been made on, on the Friday before. They hadn't had time to to complete all that needed to be done for, for him before the, the sun set and the Sabbath began. Uh, all that needed to be done to, to put the period at the end of, of his remarkable life of, of the life of the man who, who had freed her from her demons. The man who had loved her and whom she had come to love. There was so much left undone, so much left unsaid, so much more that could have been learned. And there was still so much to do. And in this moment, she didn't know how it was all going to happen that even the great stone which, which had seemed so final and as it was placed there in front of his tomb on Friday, how, how was that even going to get moved out of the way so that she and, and the other women with, that were with her could get in there and finish the work that needed to be done to honor him for all that he had done for them. It was at this moment that she realized that she entered the garden and she looked up and looked at the tomb and there to her surprise, the stone was, was not where it was supposed to be. It, it was not there in front of the tomb. Instead, it was a gaping maw of the, of the entryway and the stone instead was moved aside. And, and the guards, the guards who she knew it would not help her move that stone or were there asleep. And she ran for fear of what this might mean. For fear of what they had done to her Lord. Of how they, they must have desecrated his body. And she ran and, and she ran to the only people that she knew she could turn to in this moment, to the, to the disciples, to Peter and to John, who, 
who would surely know what to do. And when she told him that, that the tomb had been opened and, and that, the, the, that it had been laid empty, according to the other women who had, who had dared to look in, Peter and John ran off ahead of her and ran back to the tomb. And while they were running together at first, it was clear that, that John in his youth could outrun the, the much older Peter, and he ran ahead. And John arrived at the tomb, and he peered in. And there, there was the slab on which they had laid. A slab on which teacher, the master, which Jesus had been laid to rest for three days. But on the slab was not Jesus. Instead it was, was the linen wrappings that, that they had hastily put on him on Friday and, and the and the head cloth, faith, face cloth that had covered his face which was now neatly rolled up and set aside. He was afraid to go in. When Peter got there and looked in, he followed Peter. And he didn't know what to make of it. So after a while, the two of them left, puzzled, wondering what could have possibly happened. And Mary found herself there in the garden alone. For the first time, she herself dared to venture a look into the tomb. And there on the slab where Jesus had lain were two angels, one sitting where his head had been and one at where his feet had once laid to rest. And through her tears, she heard the angel say, Woman, why are you weeping? And she, she answered, Because they have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. And then she heard the noise behind her, and turning, she saw a man approaching, the, the man that she thought was the gardener. And again, through her tears, she heard this, this man ask, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? And assuming that it was the gardener there behind her, she, she said, Sir, if you have taken him, my Lord, and placed him somewhere, let me know where you have laid him so that I can take him away. And then this, this figure said to her in that, oh, so familiar tone, Mary. In an instant, she, she saw him for who he truly was. For, she saw that it was Jesus standing there, and she, she rushed forward and threw her arms around him and clung to him, crying, Rabboni, teacher. And she felt Jesus push her off a little bit and say, Woman, stop clinging to me. I have not yet ascended to my Father. But I need you to go and tell the disciples that I am about to ascend to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And so obeying, Mary ran with a new sprung hope and a newfound joy to the disciples to tell them that she had seen the risen Lord, that she had seen Jesus, who had been crucified then on Friday, who she watched die, who she helped to bury and place in the tomb. She had seen him, and he was alive. And he had told her these things. The resurrection of Jesus. is the proof that He is the Son of God. It is the proof that He is both fully human and fully divine. 
We see his humanity in his death, but we see his divinity in his resurrection. It is through the resurrection that the disciples knew with confidence that Jesus was in fact the Messiah, the Christ. And for those of you who don't know, Christ is not his last name. It is his title as a king. It is a title that means Messiah, that means Savior. This is Jesus, the Savior of humanity, who has been resurrected, whom we celebrate. It is through his resurrection that we find hope and that we see the completion and the fulfillment of all that God has done. In our first week, we talked about believing in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And we talked about the seven days of creation. But now, here on the first day of the new week, we see the fulfillment of that creation. We see the beginning of the new week, the eighth day of creation, as Christ comes back to life and creates the bridge between humanity and divinity that allows us to cross and to fulfill all that God had prepared, all that God had designed in the beginning, Christ fulfills on the eighth day in the glorious resurrection. It is a triumph over death, a victory over all that this world has to offer, the ultimate show of power that resides in God's hand. There is no other religion on earth that I can think of that claims that God, as man, came, lived, died, and resurrected. It is what defines us as Christians. It is what gives us hope. It is what tells us and shows us that all that God promised and all that God said can be trusted through Jesus Christ. You see, the disciples, the disciples thought that Jesus' death meant it was final, meant that it was over, meant that all that he had promised might not be true. But then, when he fulfilled the one thing that seemed most impossible, when he came back to life after three days, then they knew that everything that he said and everything that he did came from his place as the Son of God and as the Christ. Jesus' resurrection is what gave the disciples the courage to stand in the face of oppression, to be willing to suffer the most horrific deaths that the Roman Empire and that the Jewish authorities could dream up. Because they knew that even in death, the race was not yet done, that the word was not yet final, that the world had not claimed victory, but that Christ would bring them into new life as he brought himself into new life, just as he had promised he would. It was in the resurrection that they knew, without a doubt, that God was in control. And that no power of this world could stand against him and those who serve him. Those who became the people of Easter, the people of that resurrection. On the third day, Christ rose from the dead. This is a statement that says that we believe in the hope of a brighter future, that we believe in a new creation, that we believe in the way to life eternal. It is a statement that says that no powers on earth or under heaven shall block us from the love of God and keep us from entering His eternal kingdom. It is a declaration 
that we have been set aside through the love of Jesus Christ to become like Christ. It is a declaration that our hearts and our spirits have been opened that we can freely die to ourselves because we can trust that Christ will usher into us new life and that the Holy Spirit will come and reside within us. It is the center point. It is the foundation of all of the rest of the creed and the statement of our faith. It is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that He is alive, that He has resurrected, and that He is the Son of God and is calling us to be the children of God. On the third day he rose from the dead is our statement that Christ is victorious and that we are a part of that victory. It is our job and our duty and our calling as believers in that statement to spread that hope that joy and that salvation far and wide to allow for the reconciliation of God and humanity both within ourselves and then within others in this world. It is this statement that on the third day he rose from the dead that we are meant to tell others, if nothing else, that he has done it, that he has come alive, and that he is still living and still offering that life to all who believe and seek after Him. May we be the church of Easter. May we be a church that boldly proclaims the resurrection and that boldly lives it out in our daily lives, choosing to push for Christ, choosing to build up His kingdom and fulfill His mission without fear of anything that this world may throw against us because we can live in confidence that as Christ resurrected, so shall we. Amen.